Hull speed is bogus, but not because the math is wrong. The formula for hull speed supposedly predicts the maximum speed of a sailing yacht based solely on its length. It gets discussed frequently in sailing the yacht communities. Surprisingly, hull speed is partially correct with a very simple and strong theoretical basis. Who knew? But don't sell yourself short. There are many ways around the hull speed limits. Today, we discuss the basis for the hull speed and fill in the rest of the story. Hull speed. What makes this one speed so special? It focuses on wave resistance from the ship. Hull speed happens when the wavelength matches the hull length. Look at the picture at the right. Notice that the vessel is sitting within a single wave trough. That happens at hull speed. The bow wave stretches all the way back to the stern. But is it the maximum boat speed that this sailing yacht is capable of? To answer that, we need to first dive a little into the theory. Hull speed has a simple formula, shown in the bottom right of your screen. Ever wonder where those coefficients came from? They result from two interesting quirks of physics. First, any waves generated by the hull have to move at the same speed as the hull. Our boat generates two major sets of waves, one at the bow and one at the stern. Once those waves spread away from the hull, they get to slow down and do whatever they want. Until then though, they must do whatever is necessary to keep up with the boat. And just how do they manage to keep up with the boat? By changing their wavelength. This isn't the wave height, it's the wavelength the distance from one wave crest to the next. Our second quirk of physics, that wavelength gets tied to the speed limit for the wave. If the wave wants to go faster, it must stretch out longer. This is where we get to put the two ideas together. As the boat goes faster, the waves at the bow and stern get longer. When you reach hull speed, the bow wave lines up with the stern wave. The two waves double up on you. Your boat appears to sink down into one giant wave trough. The hull speed theory states that your sailboat will not go any faster once this happens. Hogwash! Hull speed goes too far by predicting a maximum speed. See, it only predicts when you face a big hump in resistance. That's true enough. But we go too far when we assume this creates an impenetrable speed limit. It only tells you a speed when the bow and stern waves get bigger. So what? Your boat sees big waves on a stormy day and you go through those just fine. It doesn't break any rules to go faster than the hull speed. If you push beyond the speed limit, the wavelength gets longer than your boat length. No law against that. At this point, your boat probably starts to surf on its own boat bow wave. Again, nothing wrong. No limiting formulas here. Sure, hull speed is a difficult hump to get over, but the ultimate speed of your boat depends on only two things, resistance and power, not some magical formula. Resistance depends completely on the shape of your hull. The best hulls are skinny. They minimize the size of your bow wave and stern wave. To minimize wave resistance, we want a hull that cuts straight through the wave instead of bouncing over it. When you have an efficient hull, hull speed becomes just another hump in the resistance graph. A typical resistance graph for a ship looks like the figure at the right. The humps happen when your waves line up and add to increase your resistance. You get multiple humps and hull speed is just one of those. The ship powers over the hump and continues to go faster if you have the right hull shape. Of course, getting the best hull shape becomes tricky due to the other major component, viscous resistance. Viscous resistance is basically surface friction plus some extra pieces. When the water runs along your hull, it generates friction, which slows you down. 
especially when you travel in the range of around zero to three knots. Almost all your resistance comes from friction at those low speeds. Now, even at higher speeds, friction still can form 20 to 40% of your total resistance. Don't ignore it. A good hull design minimizes the surface area of your hull, and that includes, includes all of your appendages. We don't have a magic bullet here. No trick to get the perfect minimum hull resistance. Wave and viscous resistance combine in different ways, and this is when the naval architect earns their bread and butter. They work hard to balance the different physics of wave resistance and viscous resistance and create the minimum total combination. We need power to push against that resistance and move through the water. But as a sailing ship, all the power comes from those sails. You might think the trick is to add larger sails. Unfortunately, the sail plant does not limit your maximum power. The sail plant actually gets limited by the writing moment of your hull. If you tried to build a larger mass with larger sails in, uh, for the exact same weather conditions, you're just going to heel over further and dump more of that wind. As the wind heels the boat over, the hull has to push back with a writing moment. If you try to put more power into those sails, the boat's just going to heel further and it's just going to dump that power. In extreme cases, this is how the boat capsizes. If you want more power in your sail plan, the first step is not larger sails. The trick is more writing moment in your hull. Sorry to say there's no cheap solution to that one. <sighs> the most frequent solution is you need to increase the beam of your hull, which is to say buy a new boat. There are a few other tricks we could do instead except that all of these also increase your wave resistance. So if you had to ask me what is the single thing that will limit a sailing boat's speed, I would say that it's not the length of the hull. It's actually the writing moment of them. And this is one of the many conflicts that yacht designers have to compromise on. They know that wider hulls give you more power, but that also gives you more resistance. The maximum speed of your hull is not a single magic formula or a single parameter. It's an integration of the entire vessel design, and it becomes a performance target that is strategically decided on by your naval architect. Far more complicated than just a simple formula. To finish up, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. With all this added evidence, you have to ask, why does the myth of hull speed persist? It's still printed in books. Well, simply put, designers are not stupid. We designers and naval architects, we all recognize that any boat has a point of diminishing return, where extra power is going to barely add any more speed. That point of diminishing return often happens to coincide with hull speed. That's the point where the naval architect is going to stop trying to go faster because it's not really any major benefit. But having this point of diminishing return next to hull speed is just a coincidence. Nevertheless, it reinforces the belief that hull speed predicts a reliable limit. But you're smarter than that, though. Ship design has many tricks available to push faster than the hull speed. Don't limit your expectations to a single formula. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Active heave compensation. Stability tests done from start to finish. Four ways to break your structure. Statistics and sea keeping. These are just some of the videos that I have planned for the future. If you want to see more amazing videos about ships, then click that like button or subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you next time for more awesome insights about boats.